Welcome man, welcome back to the channel. Uh what's going on guys? Real quick, man. Uh yeah, I'm running late today. I got a lot of work to do, man. Y'all know uh, I try to catch up on some automotive news when I uh on my way to work. I might be listening to the radio or on YouTube, my favorite go-to source. Uh man, do y'all know cats out there still let me do this right quick. Still stealing cat converters. Cat converters still a problem this right now. Like they have stiffened the penalty in a lot of states as far as cat converter theft. Uh, first offense, those uh, that penalty has been raised and it's still not deterring people. So I don't get it. So it's an article in here about uh, the cars that's most targeted. All right, and from this article, uh, hybrids and Toyota Prius in particular. <laughs> also a major target as their converters tend to be less worn than those of traditional automobiles. Okay, they newer, all right? Now, <laughs> I guess the newer the converter, the better the material in it that's worth the more, okay? I, also, I saw something on the news the other day where guy's making millions. This is the big guy. He's making millions, so he get all the little scrubs to go out there and do his dirty work. There's no millionaire going to go out cutting off converters. You got to have employees, all right, employers, subcontractors. You got to have some people to go out there and do the work. And uh, they merely bring him the converter. So what do he do with them? Do he sell them or he, I don't know what the guy that's making the millions off of stolen converters do. But they finally called his butt. So uh, who knows what happened now? Now, it's a piece in here about. The best way to thwart theft, experts say, is to make your vehicle less desirable or more difficult to target. How the hell do you do that? Make your vehicle less desirable. <laughs> so, let me get this straight. We go out and earn a nice living, a decent living. Wages are up. We're making good money. All of a sudden, I want a nice looking car. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't get that nice looking car or you will be targeted for cat converter theft. No, man, that's not the American way. OK, guys, uh, people work hard for their money, man. So I don't I don't agree with that at all. Uh, there are several different types of cages or clamps that can be installed by an experienced mechanic. But all vehicle owners should take basic precaution to park your car in a locked garage if you have access to one or install cameras in motion sensor lighting in the driveway. I don't know, cameras? I mean, I'm sure the guy that's planning on stealing your converter not gonna walk up to your car with no mask on and holla cheese, hi mom. No, I'm sure that's not gonna happen. So what would cameras do unless they sent off some kind of signal, a red light, and that would likely scare them off. But I don't get it, man. I don't know why. Uh, these cats still out here and they say they say it's because of the pandemic there was something else in here uh, that's a bit of a hassle but yes man cat converter theft which vehicles are most at, at risk and like i say before uh, which helps scroll okay <laughs> i didn't know this but uh every car out since 1975 has been required to get a cat converter there's a lot of people out here gutting that cat converter and simply deleting them. <laughs> so here it is. They've been required since 1975, meaning every vehicle is also a potential target for theft. Some cars, however, may be at an increased risk simply because of how they are built. What are we talking about? The nice Challengers, Chargers, the Hellcats? Those are not how they're built. Okay, I don't think the thief in particular care how the car built or how it looks or how it runs. Like I say, he's looking for the newer cars with the most material and the cat converters that he can get more money. And yeah, I know, yeah, y'all yeah, probably can't see, but I'm a scrap guy, right? So I take scraps up to the scrap yard. The last time I went with a cat converter, she gave me so much hair. I said, like, forget it. I had to bring ID proof of owning the business. Okay, I didn't have, you know, LLC, none of that then. And it ain't, I'm not going to do it anyway. It's not that freaking serious to get, what, 20 bucks, 30 bucks? 
Yeah, so, and she gave me some more hair. I finally got scared and panicked. I was like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Throw it back in the truck. And, um, and that was that. So, my point, my thing is, uh, they're under scrutiny, okay? These scrapyard places, they, they under scrutiny for accepting them. You know, so they want all the official documents and files, uh, paperwork on file saying you own the car, you own the business, you own whatever it takes. Now, it's hard to own a cat because when you replace a cat, most companies that sell you cat converters want the old one back for that very reason. Uh, you know, they can make money off of it. Now, it, this was always used to bother me. If it takes... $30 to ship a cat converter back, shipping and handling. And you only gonna get 30 or 40 bucks for it. Was it really worth it? From the company standpoint, do they really, should they really be pushing you to ship this convert? We gotta cut it and then turn it back into parts. Then they, I guess they mail it back. But at that point, is it worth it? I don't know. Well, enough for ranting about that foolishness, guys. I got some crazy work to do. This damn Sebring is still in my stall. I'm doing the heat of court. In fact, let me show y'all what is freaking going on. All right, I got a little bit more time in this video. I am in the middle of doing a heat of core, right? So this heat of core is actually an older model Sebring, all right? I haven't even got the damn, uh, I haven't got the, I gotta get the bolts out to the back that holds the AC housing. But uh, as far as the insides, let me show y'all something. I haven't even gotten a dash out because my thinking is I will have to take the dash and the HVAC housing out together. Okay? Yes. Ooh, and poor lighting. Yes, but uh, I, I got to do it all together, guys. It's not working out for me. Okay? So... <laughs> Yes, this is crazy. Oh, this y'all can't see Jack, but this is crazy. So once I get the bolts at the firewall, uh, I should be able to drop all of this back, lay it back, and then take the H back housing off and then replace the heater core. All right. So we'll see what happens. I hope I'll get this done today. Get it finished today. All right, guys, that's all I have, man. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next video.